guys. So I'm going to go ahead and do my best to start this. Like I said, this first one is going to be a bit of a learning curve. Um, every time I feel like I've got something figured out, um, it turns out that I don't. So <laughs> just bear with me. Um, so basically, this first talk is just going to be about um, building healthy, balanced meals, uh, which is kind of a key to success. Um, we want to make sure that every meal that we eat, well, maybe not every meal, but we want to try and build our meals um, to be balanced. And um, we'll basically do that by having protein, carbs, and fat in every meal. Um, so what are, I'm going to ask you guys, what are some of your struggles like with building healthy meals? What are what are some of the areas where you feel like you're not really sure what to do? You can either talk or comment or whatever. I think my biggest struggle is trying to figure out like what veggies do I like and how to make them to where I will enjoy them. Cause I really want to, I really want this to continue afterwards. I want to continue to, to eat this way, not yeah. just, you know, for these couple of weeks. And so that's why it's been hard, like trying to make sure we have enough veggies. I mean, well, I mean, Carlos, he loves veggies. He can eat them raw. He can eat them any way I make them, but it's me really um, trying to make them. <laughs> That's good for him. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's great. It's, it's, it's not a problem for him. And so that's just my, my biggest hangup. And I used, uh, I've been using an air fryer that, that I got is a duo air fryer and a pressure cooker. So I've been using that a lot to do the veggies. And so I used Sarah's last night just cause it, it just didn't seem to be making them like, it was just kind of overcooking them a little. So mm -hmm. I used uh, what Sarah posted yesterday and made them that way. And it, I did like it. I liked it a lot better, but yeah, that's just my big thing. All right. Making sure so I have enough veggies. That's, um, that's a pretty common one. Veggies. Uh, does anybody else have anything that they feel like they struggle with? Um, or they're not really sure about how to build um, a balanced meal. Um, um, let me say real quick to uh, Melissa Garcia, you know, you said you tried the way I did it. Um, I normally do that on a cookie sheet and I will tell you it works much better. I tried like those throwaway pans and I was not as satisfied as I normally am because I like to cook them to where they're a little bit crispier um, mm -hmm. and kind of like caramelized. The onions are caramelized and everything. Um, and I think a lot of that for me is just how I season them, making sure I season them well enough. Um, but that that's one of the ways we like to cook them um, and have been somewhat successful with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I liked it. It was good. It came out good. Thank okay. you. Thank you for sharing. So anybody um, else? Yeah. One thing I'm struggling with is the prepping. I mean, okay. it's just like I'm spending like all evening, it feels like, and I did some prepping on the weekends, but like, you can't do everything on the weekend. And so like getting together when I'm doing it for Ryan and for me, plus we have, you know, four-year-old. So like, he's not going to eat everything we're going to eat. So it's almost like I'm making different meals, but like I'm making, you know, three meals plus snacks, like, you know, every day, it seems like. So that's, that's really been the biggest struggle for me. Yes. Okay. Anybody else having some issues with bit, like, what are your struggles around balanced meals or what do you, do, what kind of questions do you have? Anything? Um, veggies go bad really fast Okay, is, is an issue that I have. And I'm not always the person who buys like, uh, I mean, I'm not the same person on Wednesday as I am on Sunday when I bought those veggies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish I was and I'm like James love it what the hell are you gonna do with all those Brussels sprouts at seven o'clock on a Wednesday night <laughs> that's just me personally that's been there, done that uh that's a common struggle all right so well, let's... I've got one I've got one more Melissa okay uh, the other one is you know we have I've been I've not been following the meal plan exactly kind of picking and choosing you know whatever but like, you know, on our point system, one of the things is getting in six cups of fruits and vegetables a day. And I'm like, if I follow the meal plan, I don't feel like I get all six cups in okay. and that's following the meal plan. So, cause like in yep. the morning, it's like, you know, a cup of fruits for breakfast 
And then, you know, so it's not like a cup with every meal and every snack, which if it were, then you'd get six cups in because right. there's six, you know, whatever, but the meal plan doesn't really tell you to do that. So okay. that's um, a good point that you brought up. So we'll talk about some um, ways that we can kind of work with that. Um, and I will say real quick, the meal plans are not written by me because I'm not allowed to write meal plans. <laughs> um, they're written by a registered dietitian. Uh, the points, the, the trackers, like I kind of come up with those every challenge that we do. Um, just trying to look at where the, the pain points are for people or where the the areas that we can kind of make some improvements and that people will kind of get the most bang for their buck if they were to do these things. Um, and, and a lot of times it's based off of what I'm hearing or what I'm struggling with myself, like what I hear people struggling with or what I'm hearing myself people struggling with or what I'm, sorry, I'm going to just say a bunch of words that don't make sense right now. Um, anyway, like, so I'll make the point tracker sheet there. So they're not necessarily always going to like line up perfectly. Um, so if you're doing the, if you're following the meal plan fairly closely, you might just remember like, okay, maybe this snack is, um, you know, maybe there's a snack that doesn't have any veggies in it. Like add a cup of carrots to it. Like I like to, I mean, baby carrots are such an easy snack for me to um, add in. So that's, that's an option that you can use um, just to kind of make sure you're, you're getting closer to that uh, six cups of, of fruits and veggies. So, you know, maybe the, the recipe calls for just a little bit of, of this or that, you can always add more veggies, right? Fruit, don't go crazy, but you can always add more veggies to stuff. So let's, um, let's go here to the next slide. Step one. Oh, oh, see, I cannot. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> Expect me to skip through slides all the time. Um, step one on building a healthy, balanced meal is to pick your protein. For me, myself, and actually somebody that we were just speaking with earlier today, this is the area that's hardest for me to get in. And I do need to pick my protein first. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's never been the thing that I'm like, oh yeah, protein. So pick your protein first. There's lots of options out there um, for protein. It can be chicken. It can be eggs. Um, you know, there's tons of stuff. We'll actually just, let me flip to that slide. Protein sources. We kind of went over this in our, um, kickoff seminar, but it's just, it's one of those things that I feel like I, we just need to keep looking at because there, there's, you know, the more you kind of memorize, not necessarily memorize, but like see it and read it and think about it, the easier it gets to um, kind of come up with your balanced meals. Uh, so we have a lot of protein here. Whenever I go to the grocery store, I try and make sure I get at least two or three different types of protein. Um, the reason I do that is because I have a husband that gets really tired of eating the same thing. Um, and that is going to mean that he's going to want to eat something that's not good. So if I make sure, and I, I'll usually, um, make sure I have at least one type of chicken, either chicken breast or chicken thighs, um, and then ground beef, that's kind of my, my go-to um, and then some other meat. So whether it's ground turkey, uh, maybe, an, you know, well, I'll get both chicken breast and chicken thighs. Maybe it's some sausage, like chicken sausage or, or pork sausage, whatever, whatever it might be, maybe some ground pork. Um, I just make sure I have like three different options and I'll buy a good amount of it and keep it at home. Um, and then that'll be part of my prep. Um, what are some of your favorite protein options. Does anybody have have something on here that's unusual? I like bison. Okay. Yep. Yeah, they've got that at uh, Costco and it's pretty lean. Um, that with some diced up sweet potatoes, pinch cloves. Pretty good. Yeah, that sounds good. Sounds good. You can see on here, egg white protein is on here. So that's, this implies the protein powder, but also egg whites are um, like, if you just, you can buy egg whites, you can also just make them. I personally like the whole egg. Um, there's just a lot of nutrients in the yolk. So that's an option, but sometimes that, you know, if you're making, trying to hit your macros through 
eggs only, you'll end up really high on fat if you go for all eggs. Um, but that's another protein source. Like I always, here's our egg whites over here on the side. I always make sure that we have eggs too. That's kind of a staple in my um, dinners. We eat eggs at dinner a lot. So, um, so number one, you're going to want to find some protein sources and figure out what is going to be your protein source. Um, when you're building a meal, you're going to make sure you have enough for you, which is going to be, you can use um, the hand method. So for women, you're going to look at the palm of your hand, the like thickness and, and size of it is a, is a decent place to start with a serving of protein. For men, it'll be two palms. Um, now for me, I, I usually go about a palm and a half just to kind of fuel my, my training, make sure I'm, I'm, getting enough protein in to build muscle. Um, but if you're trying, if your goal is to lose weight, you can stick with that, uh, palm size protein and, and see how that goes. Um, so start with the protein. Number one, once you've got that figured out, um, then we can go to step two, which is choose your carbs. Now carbs sometimes get a bad rap. We talk about this a lot. Um, but they're not all that. They're not all created equal either. So, um, you know, obviously when we're choosing carbs, these, the ones here on my screen are not necessarily the top choice, <laughs> you know, the croissants and the rolls and the pasta, um, but they're not necessarily like quote unquote bad. We just really have to be mindful of how much um, of them we're consuming. Um, so here are we need, we need to have starchy carbs and non-starchy carbs. So starchy carbs are over here on the left side of the screen. Um, and it's, we've got your acorn squash, um, beans. Beans is one that I think a lot of us, especially a lot of us CrossFitters have kind of forgotten over the years because um, you know, they've been, uh, they, they got a bad rap for lectins and other, you know, quote unquote, anti-nutrients, but it's, I mean, nuts fall into the same category sometimes. So if you feel okay when you eat beans, just don't take beans off the table. If you don't feel good when you eat beans, you don't have to eat them. Um, pumpkin is another good one that we, we don't think about a lot. There's a pumpkin oats recipe on the website that pumpkin steel cut oats. It's pretty tasty if you haven't ever tried that. Um, but we've got all of these. We've got sweet potato over here, um, lots of them. So you're gonna pick a starchy carb. Now remember the starchy carb is gonna be just like a quarter of your plate. So we don't need to go crazy with the starchy carb, but you know, when you're building your meal, you've got your protein and now you're gonna have a starchy carb. And honestly, the serving size is gonna be about the same as your protein size, maybe even a little bit smaller, just depending on, on what, you're, what you got going on. But make sure you have it because it's important for energy and, and to feel, feel good. On the far right here, we have our volume carbs, which that's gonna be all of our veggies. And these are the things that if you're trying to like, you know, if you're following the meal plan and you don't feel like you're meeting that six cups um, of fruits and veggies, like look through here and see, okay, carrots are on there. You know, throw some carrots in there somewhere. Um, you can throw some, some spinach uh, in a smoothie. I like to use the frozen spinach just because like James mentioned earlier, <laughs> the, the veggies just don't last super long. Frozen spinach in a smoothie is a great way to get in more veggies. Um, and then same with the cauliflower. Uh, Sarah posted the, the cauliflower in the smoothie. That's another good way to do that. Um, but also at dinner, that's where we really load up in my house with veggies. Um, we put a lot of veggies on the plate. So look here and, and see where you can, can load up. But once you have one from the, this side, it, and it can be any of these, it can be green, yellow, or red. Um, that's going to be the one that you kind of limit the, the amount. And then the other one is going to be the one where you load up the starchy carbs. So if you, if this were you, I want you to be thinking, which protein did you pick? which starchy carb and which non-starchy carb. And then at the end here, I'm gonna like ask for some examples for, for some meals that you guys have built on your, um, in your mind. So next is add in healthy fat. Step three, we have to have fat. Fat also gets a bad rap, although the tables have kind of turned a little bit over the last few years where 
now carbs are the bad one and fats the good one. And in all honesty, they're, they're both good. They're both necessary for our body to function. Um, but I find that people tend to be in either the camp of not eating enough fat or eating way too much. Um, and yes, you can eat too much because it's very calorically dense. So we do want some, but if you, if you feel like you're eating a pretty clean diet, um, eating lots of whole foods and not eating too many carbs, but you, you know, say you're, you're tending toward a paleo diet, you may be taking in a lot of calories via fat. So fats are good, but we, we do need to be mindful of them. And again, here's our um, fats list. I, I like to go remember things like olives. Um, that's a Costco has these giant jars of uh, garlic and jalapeno stuffed olives and they are delicious. And it's, it's such an easy way to add a little bit of fat to your um, dinner or your snack or whatever. They're really good. And then like nuts, I really, I love cashews. And so that's kind of my go-to for nuts, but almonds are good. Um, you know, whatever, whatever you like. Macadamia nuts are really good. If you're, if you're struggling to find a nut that doesn't have um, extra carbs, macadamia nuts are, are good. So, but think about this. If it, and if you have, um, you know, say you've got your veggies and your protein and your starchy carb, and now you're like, oh, what am I going to do for, for my fat? Butter. Butter is a good spot. I'll throw some butter on my sweet potato. Uh, maybe you do some olive oil if you don't like butter. Uh, make sure you're using actual butter though. We don't want any margarine. Um, that's, that's like, I forget to talk about that still, but um, margarine or the fake butters, we don't need that. We don't want butter that's mixed with canola oil. We just want like real butter that's just made out of cream and, and has a little salt in it. Um, any question about fats, it can be very confusing. Next step. Hey, four. Melissa. Oh, yeah. What's up? So I'm asking for my mom. Um, she was asking about a better alternative. They, they like a lot of peanut butter. And I had recommended, uh, I well, not a lot, but they like, I was recommending some snacks with, you know, like apple and peanut butter or something like that. And she was mm -hmm. wondering what, um, if there was a better option versus just regular peanut butter. Um, so if you, number one, look at the ingredients on your peanut butter or your almond butter. Um, a lot of times these nut butters taste delicious, but it's because they have sugar added to them. <laughs> so that would be step one to make sure you have the healthiest choice there. Does it have anything besides the nut that it says that it is? So if it's peanut butter, it should have peanuts and salt, and that's it for the ingredients. Um, same goes for almond butter um, and all of those others. This is a tricky one here because, um, you know, marketing has just kind of, it's so good. And they trick us into, you know, oh, this is almond butter and it's healthy, or this is almond milk and it's good for you and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But then you look and there's, um, you know, seven ingredients. And sometimes you can find almond butters that have sugar added to it, like two different kinds of sugar even. And they might even like try to use fancy palm sugar or something, you know, to make it sound healthier, but it's still sugar. Um, and then they'll even add other oils still. So you'll, you'll find sunflower oil or, or, you know, whatever, there'll be a blend of oils that may or may not be quote unquote healthy. So I like to look for it. Like I go with peanut butter I personally love peanut butter. I have it almost every day in my oatmeal. Um, but I, I get the kind at Costco that is, it's just peanuts and salt is the only kind. Or it's Smucker's Naturals is another good brand. Um, and it's just, again, peanuts and salt. If you see any other oils on there or if you see any type of sugar added to it, look for look for a different option. Um, and it's, same goes for almond and you can mix it up. It's, it's not a bad idea to mix up um, the types of, of uh, nut butters that you do and just try something different. With, with apples, I really like almond butter and um, macadamia nut butter was another one that I tried once and that was pretty tasty too. So those are some options. Does that answer the question? Next up, portion your plate. So I kind of have been talking about this as we've gone over each item. Um, but again, we've got our plate method. You hear us talk about this all the time, but it's just, it's because it's like such a simple way to try to build your plate and it works. Um, so, you know, half of your plate is your non-starchy veggies. A quarter of it is the starchy carbs and a quarter of it is going to be your protein. Now, depending on 
how lean or fatty your protein is, that's going to determine how much fat you add in. So I love, again, at Costco, I should probably like be a sales rep for Costco or something. Um, but they have this uh, kielbasa, jalapeno kielbasa at, at Costco. It's pretty high in fat, not going to lie, but it's really tasty. So when I have that, I, I like to make like a, um, like a little hash. I'll, I'll take, I'll dice those, those uh, sausages into just little circles and, um, or just slice them up into circles, throw them in the pan and dice up or uh, slice some bell peppers and onions and throw that all in the pan and just kind of mix it up until it's cooked up real good. Um, and that's a pretty decent meal, although it's pretty high in fat and not a ton of protein. So I have to kind of add in some extra protein. One of the things we'll do, that's where I'll use some egg whites. I don't always use egg whites, but for that meal, I'll just kind of scramble in some egg whites or I'll even just cook them after, like I'll take the sausage and, and peppers and onions out and then the leftover um, grease from the sausage, I'll cook the egg whites in that and then just kind of serve them on the top of the, the little mixture of sausage and bell peppers. Um, but that's that's gonna be something you think about. So when you're building your, your plate, you want lots of veggies, you want your protein, um, you'll want a starchy carb. So I've also added rice to that or I'll add in, you know, there's, there's unlimited things you can do for your starchy carb with that meal, but uh, I don't need to add any extra fat. And in fact, I need, what I really need to do is add in some lean protein because that sausage, the, the fat to protein ratio is um, it's, it's pretty, pretty heavy, heavily leaning towards fat. So it's got a good amount of fat or a good amount of protein, but it's got more fat. So we, we got to bump up the protein content in that particular meal. And for me, the easiest way to do that is through egg whites. Um, you could do it by adding in another meat or something like that. Or if you know that one of your other meals was protein heavy, maybe you don't worry about it so much, right? Because at the end of the day, as long as everything's kind of balanced, then we're good to go. Um, what are some of your guys' favorite meals that you feel are pretty balanced? Um, what do you, what do you, what, give me some ideas, share like some of your favorites. Um, so in the meal plan, there was, uh, the mahi, I think it was mahi and I did the seeds of change, uh, little rice packets, mm, the yes. garlic and quinoa one. I mean that, yeah, I, whatever. And then, um, uh, just the side, I think we did like asparagus or something with it. Yeah. And, um, I found a recipe on Pinterest for like seasoning the mahi. And so all we used to cook it was, you know, a little bit of like avocado oil. Um, and then it's just like dry rubbed with these spices. And that was so good and like filling and like, it was like, it's probably one of our favorite meals that we've had so far. Awesome. That's, that's awesome. I love those um, seeds of change packets. They, they really make it super simple. Has, has anybody else, I know Sarah, has used those um, rice packets. Anybody else familiar with them? I've never heard of them. Where can I find those? <laughs> because Costco. I'm making, king <laughs> I'm actually making, oh, okay, Costco. I'm making quinoa, like I'm making it on yeah. scratch. So I'm like, Ugh, I would much rather have something a lot faster. Yeah, so they're good. Um, and I've, Tasty Bites is another brand. It's similar that, and they do more of just regular rice. Oh, Sarah's got a picture. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it looks like this. You can buy them in a big box at Costco. Yep. Oh, sweet. Okay. Oh yeah, I've tried those. So those are good. You and can, can, sorry, whoever was. It's okay. You can also get them at HEB. Um, we found them there. And um, Sarah, can't you get them at like United? Were you telling me that? Or there's another place I think too. If you don't, if you can't get to Costco. Yeah. What do you have it? I've even bought them individually at Walmart. Yeah, you can get them at Walmart too. What do you have in, in El Paso, Melissa? What's your grocery store chain? Sprouts is where, where I'll really oh, go. You know, Sprouts or Target. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, if not, we do have a Costco. It's kind of far from where I'm at. Um, okay. There's only two here. I almost, the first time I was here, I almost went to the one in Juarez. <laughs> <laughs> I got to the checkpoint. I was like, well, where am I going? <laughs> It was really up there security. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty funny, but yeah, the, uh, I've got a sprouts pretty close to me. So that's usually the one that I'll go to because a lot of this stuff, I, I mean, 
especially the fish. Oh no, no way am I able to get that at Walmart. <laughs> I mean, you no. might be able to, but do you want to? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I do. Yeah. So um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look there for it. Awesome. Yeah, it's pretty good. And you can check for the another brand called Tasty Bite. It's, a, it's in a yellow package, similar type of package. But basically, these are little um, pouches that are microwavable. Um, so now, again, we're, we're giving up some, maybe a little bit of optimal health for convenience. Um, you know, and I talk about this a lot and, and, you know, there's, there's going to be a give and take there, but, but it's, it's okay. You know, anytime you get something that's kind of like an instant and microwavable, that means it's already been processed at least a little bit, um, odds are. So especially with rice, something that normally would take 40 minutes or so to cook, if you can pop it in the microwave and it's done in 90 seconds, that means it's, it's been through some stuff, but it's still a whole food. It's just kind of been most likely steamed ahead of time. And um, sometimes they'll put it through a process to kind of flatten it out a little bit. So it just cooks a little faster. But again, to me, it's, it's, it's worth the um, giving up that little bit of like optimal nutrition for knowing that like I can do this. It's gonna make my, my day easier, my life a little bit easier. I'm still eating healthy. I'm still eating a whole food, you know, it, okay. that's, it, we can get caught in the details of trying to make everything perfect sometimes, but again, progress is a, the goal, not perfection. So, right. Um, so yes, that, that tuna with the season change and asparagus, that's awesome. Anybody else have anything that they really like, like a go-to? Anything with whole chicken and uh, the crock pot chicken and throwing in veggies and beans. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's very good. One of my favorite HSN meals is the turkey bolognese. Um, and what's interesting about that is I would not have chosen turkey sausage like on my own, but that, that's mm -hmm. what that recipe calls for. And um, I like to add onions to it it does not have onions but it has onions roasted bell pepper um artichoke heart and then you serve it over spaghetti squash so you're getting a lot of vegetables and wouldn't the spaghetti squash be more of the starchy yeah it, for me it's kind of in between it depends between. on maybe how much you have right yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, there's quite a, I mean, I, I do a whole spaghetti squash and, and throw yeah. in there. So I, I call that my starchy yeah. um, carb, um, but that one's really tasty. It has a lot of flavor in it. And uh, it, to me is even better. I meal prep it on Sunday and it's even better throughout the week. Yes. That's, and that's a good point. A lot of those um, like sauce type recipes. Uh, it also has tomatoes. <laughs> yes. Lots of tomatoes. <laughs> um, a lot of those sauce type recipes are better after a couple of days in the fridge because all those flavors just kind of meld together so um that's a really good point and chili if you ever do I, post, I always post this recipe so I feel like people are tired of seeing it but the chocolate chili from um well fed the that recipe book that it's one of those that like if it sits in the fridge a few days it's delicious um so yeah one of my, one of our go-to meals I talked about that we do eggs a lot I will go home um, and cook for dinner. For me, I will I actually will have three different pans on the stove, one for my son, one for me, one for Jasper, uh, because we all will eat different amounts of this. But um, one of the things I do on the weekends to prep for the for meals is I will try and roast a bunch of potatoes. So I'll get out a cookie sheet covered in parchment paper and then throw you know four or five white potatoes and four or five sweet potatoes on that cookie sheet roast them and then stick them in the fridge because that's one of those things that takes a long time to prep. Um, but if I can just do a, bu a bunch of them at once and then pull them out as needed, that's easy. So then I can get out the potato and I can weigh out the amount because I I'm one of those people that I enjoy weighing my food. It's weird. Um, it's like a game of guessing, like how close I can get on my first try of, of the right amount. So like I'll put usually about 130 to 150 grams of white potato for myself, but I'll dice up that already baked 
potato and then I'll add a full bell pepper to it and some onion and I'll, I'll saute that up until it's um, soft. So I've got a lot of veggies there. I've got my starch um, and then my eggs, I go for three eggs and um, my, my dinner meal is usually a little bit higher in fat because my earlier in the day meals are not. Um, you can, that's just something that I play with and it works well for me. You don't have to do it that way, but um, so that's one of my meals that I build that's balanced. And I just know that I need three eggs. I need a full bell pepper and I'll add some onion to it. And then um, 150 grams of white potato, which is a pretty, it's a fairly small potato. Honestly, if I find a potato about the size of my fist, I know that that's going to be about the right size. Now, Jasper, his his amount is going to be a little bit bigger because um, he's bigger. And so he usually goes about 200 grams of potato, um, still a full bell pepper and some onion. And then um, he'll usually do four eggs, but sometimes depending on what he's had early in the day, he'll go three eggs and some egg whites. So there's just some ideas on how to, to do that. Oh, and then my son, he just gets what I put in there. <laughs> He'll get leftovers of the bell peppers and onions and some potatoes and, and two eggs. So um, he still eats the same thing, just different quantities. Um, so that's one example. That's one of the things that I do um, fairly regularly. And then we'll top it with salsa. So that's a little bit more vegetables in there. And um, you can scramble it all together, or have your eggs uh, on the side, whatever you want. But again, it's just a simple, easy dinner or breakfast, if you want to eat it at breakfast and have time to make it, that's fine too. Um, let's see, what do we got next? Oh, that's the end. So now let's talk about questions real quick. Um, I, I know Missy was talking earlier about trying to find time for meal prep or, or like building the meals at, at dinner. Another one of the things that I've done that that really saves me during the week is when I have time for meal prep. And I need to clarify, like I stay on the weekend a lot when I meal prep, which ideally is when I do it, but some weekends we're not even in town. And so then I just find wherever I've got a couple of hours during the week that I can just set aside and prep, I'll do it. So it doesn't need to be on the weekend. If you have time, you know, if you find a two hour window during the week, use that for your meal prep and it'll work. And in fact, if you go to the grocery store then too, it's usually a little less crazy. Um, but one of the things that I'll do is those proteins that I picked out, the three different proteins, I will actually cook them on the weekend so that I have them already made. Um, I will season them generically with salt, pepper, um, and garlic, usually maybe even paprika, because those seasonings tend to be in everything that I cook. Um, I'll cook up a couple of pounds of ground beef. We'll cook a bunch of chicken thighs or chicken breast. Jasper will grill it uh, on the grill. Um, or whatever, but I will get all that and then I'll stick it in its kind of generic form in the refrigerator. And then when, you know, if I'm going to make, um, say, a marinara sauce and I need meat for the marinara, all I got to do is pull out that ground beef that's already cooked, throw it in a pan, start it heating, pour the sauce onto it, and then just let it heat through and simmer instead of going through from cooking it from raw. Um, same thing with chicken. I can add, if I do chicken in the crock pot or if we do it in the grill, we know we've got it. So we can pull it out, we can shred it. Um, if it's already shredded, we can just add it into whatever else we want. It's just, it's really versatile. And then you can add the different veggies to it as you're building your meal. Um, but for me, one of the big keys is just having protein already prepared and then I can add to it add your seasonings, add your veggies and go from there. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about that? No, I like that idea. I completely forgot about, you know, trying to do it that way. I think Laurent was kind of based around that, mm -hmm. that, that mindset of uh, doing, you know, those, you know, get, getting prepped, those parts that take you the longest during the yeah. week. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of something I forgot. Yeah. And I will say to you, Oops, go ahead. I'm sorry. When you say you roast your potatoes on the weekend or whatever, do you just be like, what do you mean by that? Like you just leave them whole and yep. like, like bake them, like baked potato. Okay. Yep. I, that's exactly what I do. I'll put them on a cookie sheet. I'll put parchment paper down because of the sweet potatoes. Otherwise they'll make a mess. Um, so I'll put parchment paper on the cookie sheet and note um, wax paper and parchment paper are not the same thing. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to make sure people know that. Um, if, if you use wax paper, you'll have smoke everywhere. So don't do that one. Um, 
but and then I'll wash off my potatoes, throw them on the cookie sheet, and I will just wrote, throw them in the oven at about 375 for depending on how big or small they are. I like to buy the smaller potatoes, but Jasper likes to buy the giant ones. Um, so if they're real big, they're going to probably take over an hour. But if they're the smaller sized potatoes, then they'll they'll usually be done in about 45 to 55 minutes. Um, but I'll just cook them until they're real, like look nice and soft and then pull them out, let them cool for a second and then pop them into the fridge. So when you dice them up, they don't just turn into mush. Mm -mm. Nope. No, okay. and, no. And then they cook really easily. <laughs> nice. They, like when you, when I throw them in the pan with, um, some coconut oil, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll ice them, or, you know, like saute them and then they, they're soft on the inside, but kind of crispy on the outside. But when you do them from raw, like cook any um, potatoes on the weekend and I dice them from raw it just takes so much longer for them to cook and and then I borderline burn them and you know it's just like a big mess so when they're when they've already when the potatoes already been baked and then I dice it and, and toss it in the skillet with some oil it's it's way easier it takes about five minutes and they're ready so do you bake it a little bit less than you normally would I, okay, sometimes I do that, but the problem that I find um, is that then I don't, it's like kind of a guessing game on, okay, did, now did I cook it long enough? Like, it, I haven't had an issue with cooking them and then putting them in the fridge. When you put them back in the fridge, they, um, they don't, they're not quite as soft because the, the cold kind of makes them a little more firm. Um, so then you pull them out. I haven't had an issue with them like falling apart when I them out and cook them but when I've undercooked them I have had an issue with thinking I'd cooked them long enough but then I didn't okay that makes sense so I mean you you certainly could but it's up to you um oh I want to talk about air fryer too so how many of you guys have like an air fryer or um instant pot or some sort of cooking thing I have an instant pot but no air fryer okay okay good yeah I love mine it's it's so convenient yeah yeah, they're, um, they're pretty awesome. And Missy's got, I feel like, what do you have, Missy? Do you have both or do you have air fryer? I, I have both, but um, I have both, but I just got the air fryer and I haven't used it yet. So okay. I'm a little like, I don't know how to use it, but yeah. I want to. <laughs> so I really like both of them and, um, but they're just very different. I have learned, so air fryer is great for veggies. Broccoli is really good in it. Um, just make sure you season it. Um, what else? Like potatoes, I'll throw my diced potatoes in there to cook. That's, that works well too. Um, bell peppers, like it's really good to cook some veggies though. There are veggies though that I do not like in it. And it's, um, the leafier, the veggie, the less I, I like it. Like I do not like Brussels sprouts in there. Um, I don't like asparagus in it. Um, you know, it just seems like it kind of dries them out and, and overcooks them. So play around with it and see what you like. Um, but it's definitely worth experimenting with. Um, I've done a, a chicken breast recipe in there or chicken thigh recipe in there that is delicious. Um, scroll back through our Instagram feed and, and you'll find that. Or just look up nom nom paleo uh, crackling chicken thighs or something like that but it's so good and it's just super easy in the air fryer it's nom nom what nom nom paleo okay it's really good um so does anybody have any other like questions before we get done like what is your biggest struggle right now about building healthy meals so well if i can ask one more back for uh this one's for carlos so usually during the day those snacks that they kind of schedule in there um, between the meals, there are times that Rocky can't get to that lunchbox <laughs> to, right. to have that snack. And so I did get him a couple of Lara bars to take with him, but is that something that's, I mean, he's going to, it's going to get to a point here soon also where he's going to be out in the field a lot and won't be, you know, it's just going to, I'm trying to figure out ways to make it a lot easier for him to eat a little healthier out there. Yes. Um, so, especially those snacks. Yeah. And, and again, you're going to, everybody's a little different and you're going to just do the best you can with the situation you have. Right. Um, I would definitely encourage you to get some um, RX bars because they'll have that protein in there. Whereas the Lara bars 
don't, unless you get the ones that have specifically protein, but then it's soy protein, which is not, um, it's not my favorite. So look at getting some RX bars. That's, that's a really good option when you're in a pinch. Um, it's whole foods. It has that protein, which is going to help him feel satisfied. Um, does he, when he's out, does he, is he able to like keep stuff cold or does it have to be something he can like put in his pocket? Some he can put in his pocket. <laughs> okay. Beef, beef jerky. Um, and then like bananas or, or, um, you know, random stuff like apples, those, those things where you don't have to keep them cold. You don't have to, uh, they don't, they don't have much requirement as far as getting sliced and that kind of thing. Um, but beef jerky is a, is a, is a good place to start. Cause it's got some protein in it and just make sure he drinks all his water. Cause it's generally kind of high in sodium. Okay. Um, Melissa, there's also something called an Epic bar that are oh, yeah. decent and it, yeah. they're very high in protein. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and I know Sprouts has those too. Okay. Epic bar. Yep. Um, so for, that's kind of like when inconvenient snacking, like whenever you just don't have availability, but what would be some of your go-tos snacking has been a topic between our family <laughs> And uh, what would be some of your go-tos as far as making balanced snack choices? So it's similar to building your meal, just on a smaller scale, right? So pick a protein, pick a veggie and, um, or a fruit and pick a fat. That's, I, I just kind of like to think of it like I need a meat, a, a plant, and then a fat. So maybe you go apples, peanut butter, and then maybe a little bit of turkey, sliced turkey, deli meat. Um, maybe some cheese. Cheese is kind of a two for one. You've got fat and protein there. Um, and then have like half a banana or I don't know, that sounds like a weird combination, but <laughs> uh, whatever would go better with cheese, uh, a rice cake. Like I don't eat rice cakes, but some people love them. And, you know, that's kind of an easy thing. Um, but think fruit or veggies, carrots, um, celery sticks, cucumbers uh are a really good place to to go like i like cucumbers and um that's a good option but think of some sort of plant and that can be for your your carb right and then your protein deli meat is is um that's for me that's like an easy way to just get you know 10 grams of protein in there which is a good good size a good amount for a snack um and then you can even drizzle a little, um, like guac on there or not drizzle, but like spread a little guac on the, on the deli meat. And then I'll roll it up with some cheese and double my protein and fat right there. And then eat it with, uh, you know, some carrots on the side. That's a, that's a good little snack. I think the thing with snacks that you want to do is you, you want to make sure you have some protein, some sort of plant type food and a little bit of fat. Um, and you just want to make sure it's not too much and that it doesn't turn into kind of mindless, uh, munching, right? Snacks are really easy to start just kind of like eating, 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 eating. So just have your portion, um, put it in like a little baggie or a little container. That's going to be your snack size portion of veggies and um, nut butter or whatever it is you do. And, and that's, that's where you're going to stick to it. You won't just continue eating. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. And does anybody else have any good snack ideas. That's kind of one of my favorite things about doing these group things is um, everybody has some awesome ideas. So I did um, on the, it's actually on the meal plan, the turkey roll-ups. Mm, um, yeah. What I did was I just got like a slice of, so like for Ryan, I do three and for me, I do two. And I like lay out the turkey slice and then I spread the hummus uh, or you could do guacamole if you don't like hummus on there. And then I actually grate up the carrots and the celery and then oh, I sprinkle them on there and then I roll it all up together. That's even yummier. <laughs> yeah. And it's super it's got that little bit of crunch in it and, yeah. and it's all in one. So that's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Awesome. Great idea. So last question, not related to bail building balanced meals, but how's everybody's water uh, intake going? Surprisingly good. Good. Yeah. Mine actually is too. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah, mine's mine. Uh, yesterday, I think I finished my water a lot faster than I expected because I gave myself a goal, and so that's what I've been trying to yes, stick yes. with. I fill up my gallon and try to stick with that. I know it's yes. hard. But... 
<laughs> it is and you have to like be aware of it right if you just kind of yeah. wing it it's really hard to get it all finished i've been using like leader bottles yes. and like a good rule of thumb is to i try to polish off one liter bottle between the time i wake up in the morning and the time i leave to go to work so like yeah. that solid hour so instead of four cups of coffee i'm trying to hit my water it's like two birds with one one stone right there, right? We're uh, decreasing our caffeine intake and hydrating our body. Awesome. How about you, Missy? Um, I have a water bottle that I got from a friend for Christmas and it's pretty and it's marked like, um, you know, every like 8 a.m., 9 a.m., you mm -hmm. know, whatever. And then it's a, re it's one of those that you refill, um, but it's, it's only like 37 ounces but if I get three of those in a day, that's 111 ounces. Yes. So, which is great for me. Um, and I actually one day got in like 127 and that's probably the most water I've ever drank in my life in one day. <laughs> um, but it's helpful. I, I like it because it's pretty to look at and I like thing, pretty, pretty things motivate me. Um, yes. And yes. then having those lines that like remind me, because if I don't, if I have it sitting right there on my desk and at like 11 o'clock, I'm to where I, you know, I'm at the eight o'clock or the nine o'clock line. I'm like, oh man, I got a drink, you know? So mm -hmm. it's like a reminder and it lets me know that like I'm getting, because it's really easy for me to like, oh, I had a, a glass of water, but I don't really, I mean, maybe there was what, like maybe 10 ounces in there. I don't really know. Yeah. Um, and so by the end of the day, it's like, well, I had five glasses of water, but I don't even really know how many ounces are in those glasses. And, you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. so the bottle helps me a lot. Awesome. So I love that you guys are, are finding strategies and um, things that work for you. And that's really the key. Like you'll, you know, there's unlimited advice out there on, well, this is what I did and it that's, so that's what you, everybody should do because it worked for me. That's not always the case, right? We're all a little bit different, but I love that you guys are just aware and being and like focus and you have, have, have a strategy. Like James is like, I need to get this liter bottle done before I leave the house in the morning. That's awesome because if you start your day off like that, it's so much easier to just keep it rolling. I like that Missy found one that she likes to look at and it gives her a good little like reminder and, and it's not kind of an unknown as to far as far as like, well, I know I drank out of this cup a few times, but <laughs> I don't know how much and I don't know, you know, how many times. So Great job, guys. All right. It, does anybody have any last questions? Otherwise, we'll wrap it up and then we won't have one next week, but we'll do another one the week after. And I'd love some like, you know, in the next week or so, if you have some questions, we can, you know, I can build the if there's kind of a consistent theme like that you're that people are struggling with. I'll build the nutrition talk around that. But no further questions. I like doing this. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's Thank fun. you. So awesome, guys. Well, it was good to talk with everybody and keep posting in the group because that is super helpful for everyone involved. Like Sarah's recipe that she posted um, with her vegetables that already helped Melissa out. So yes. share your successes and share your questions. And um, we'll, we've got one week almost complete and we'll start our next week. Don't forget to keep track of your point trackers. And I'll, I'll have you guys submit those on Monday in the group chat cool all right good awesome thank you yeah. yes thank you melissa all right we'll talk soon all right y'all have a good weekend you, you too, too. Bye -bye. Bye.